If it wasn't for skateboarding, I'd be gangbanging right now. It wouldn't be none of this. I wouldn't be in front of this camera right now. What's your ultimate goal out of skateboarding? Just living a better life, period. My name's Kevin Paler, and I'm 20 years old. And when I got to Stevenson Elementary, uh, I used to play basketball, I used to play football, I used to play tag, I used to jump off roofs, I used to do everything, break windows. At that time, we used to just run around and do nothing. It happened to be like a pro skater there. He told me that his homeboy got hurt at Cherry Park, like he split his leg open. He asked me, do y'all skate? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, can I ride one of y'all boards? He's like, yeah, go ahead. I was doing little tricks. He was like, man, you want that board? Because I don't think my homeboy going to need it anymore. So, you know, he gave me my, that was my first board from the beginning. That's the start of everything. My stepfather was a heroin addict, and my mom had to work two jobs to support three kids. And my stepfather's, like, drug addiction, basically, because he wasn't working. So. I didn't like my stepdad, so I was never home. And we lived in like a one bedroom apartment. We had, you know, we were all in one room all the time. So I was like, I'm not going home. I'm gonna go skate. And the thing with the skateboarding, I think it was like ex just accessible because I didn't need, I didn't need teammates. I didn't need somebody else to come and help me skate. It was just all that came out of my head. Whatever was like going on in my head, it would just come out in skating. When I started turning 16, I was on my own, trying to make it on my own, trying to work. Started skating. I graduated from high school. I was really bouncing around this friend's house to this friend's house to this friend's house, just trying to, you know, find a way to make it on my own. Skateboarding, pretty much, it saved my life, man, because I grew up on the east side of Long Beach, too, and I didn't come from, like, a rich family, and, you know, my family had problems and stuff like that. When you're growing up as a teenager, you're dealing with all this stuff in, in life that you don't really understand yet. For me, skateboarding, you know, was something that I could do by myself or with my friends and channel all that aggression and, and all the problems in your life and just put it into something positive. Look at the cops. Look at the cops. Look at the cops. <laughs> we, we, we run this, Dicky. I know he's all like, what are you laughing at? High school wasn't really nothing to me. It wasn't really no skaters over there. It was more like gang members and people that just don't know how to act good when they in school. And I was one of those people that didn't know how to act good when I was in school. Mid 12th grade, I was just through, you know, I didn't want to go no more because it was too much of a hassle getting on the bus and making it out here on time and having money for the bus. So, you know, I just stopped all that, like, man, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to stay in Long Beach. I wasn't going to school, none of that. I was just, like, just strictly skating, full time on skate. I wasn't feeling being homeless, you know what I'm saying? I was just trying to make it, period. If you was to ask me, why are you not a felon? Why are you not in jail right now? It's because of skating, pretty much. It sounds silly to say, but that's the truth. Ghetto Park is the shield, and we're in the middle of all like a war zone. So you got the shield, and, and then you got all type of war zone going on around. Having a person die next to the park, which was a 13-year-old, but it's like, damn, like, it's so close. Like, I'm skating right here, and there's a memorial for a kid that died right there. A week later, uh, one of the homies told me that 
this lady that usually come by, you know what I mean, just, just, just watch a skate. She fell asleep and never woke up. It was just one memorial over here and one memorial in the other corner. It makes it seem like it's a cemetery. Six hundred bucks? I think it's gonna be around six hundred bucks for doing what? Victoria Park? Skating without uh, helmet. <laughs> it's six hundred dollars. Now why don't you have a helmet? He has a helmet in the ghetto. <laughs> I mean, Mike, you have a helmet? Yeah. <laughs> That's one guy I know. You got a helmet? Hi. I don't care. Hi. He ain't got a helmet. A lot of kids out here that look up to us and stay up on their skating, you know what I'm saying? They 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 really idolize us like we're not no bad people for these kids to look up to. Daniel, he's little juice, you know what I'm saying? That's my little homie. It's not even like on a gang banging tip, you know what I'm saying? It's it's more of a more of a mentor. We're not gonna be teaching them anything wrong, you know what I'm saying? We're just gonna teach them skating and how to be the best skater they can be. Alright, Isaac, what do you got? Ooh, uh, do your hammer city riders right away. We saw these kids who were hungry to skate and were like super cool and it was like I had been given an opportunity when I was younger, you know, with getting boards and stuff like that. So like it's almost we had to return the favor to yeah. the kids there and try to hook them up and give them boards and keep them out of trouble and like care for them like they were like, you know what I mean, our little brothers or something like that. I remember way back when, when I was a young teenager rebelling when, in Long Beach, California. A hey, man knows work day, those work day. I remember way back when, when I was a young teenager rebelling when, in Long Beach, California. Once you're around, you know these kids more and more, you get to kind of get to know them, and you know who's, you know, you know who's kind of doing good and who's where people's heads are at, and just over the time period. You know, Mike, for me, always stood out because he had, like, a good heart, and you could mm. tell he wasn't, like, up to anything. He was just, like, he had a personality, and he was, you could tell he was he was good-hearted. Mike just caught on so fast. He caught on so fast, he was just up there like that. Where did I see Michael going with his career? He was definitely making it. This was when Mike was getting hooked up with Boost Mobile. They had his name on the back of things, and the photo got into uh, Trans World magazines. I think he had like potential to be somebody in skateboarding. You know, yeah. he had that drive and like charisma and like you know the heart to do it. Woo -hoo -hoo! That's enough. Cut that. Off. What you got to say about that trick, Mike? Buttery. That was kind of crazy because I tried to do a trick off. Uh, some stairs and there's a bunch of tiles. So like when I tried the trick, 
I slipped out and like banged my head on the ground, so I had a seizure. I blacked out, I don't remember anything. The only person that was there was Black Mike and he was there to help me out. His older brother usually has, he has seizures too, so he know what to do. Out of everybody and you know what to do, you save my life, like, you know what I mean? I love that dude. Cause if it wasn't from, for that, it's just like, I wouldn't even be skating anymore. We passed Olive, you know, I see the police out there at the corner and all that, you know what I'm saying? I was just thinking to myself, I hope they ain't one of the homies out there. I never would have thought it would be Mike. Ooh, give an honor to God. Thank thank you, Your Honor. D.A. Larnigan, Detective Lash, entire staff, for all of you brought to bring justice to be served to my son's murder, Michael Green. The impact on my life, no one can imagine. As I stand here and listen to the case unfold, what I do want to say to the murderer, Mr. Robert Williams, who would... <sighs> Mm. You have murdered a young man, Mr. Black Mike, as they call him in the streets, a positive young man. All he wanted to do was skateboard around the world. He wanted to keep a happy face. <laughs> he was loved by many, taken away by stray bullets, which I can't understand nowadays. As your life haunts you over and over again, I just pray to God, don't quit. Please make peace with God. Please change your life, baby. God bless. On one of the information wherein you were convicted of murder in the first degree, you order committed to the Department of Corrections for a period of life with a minimum of 25 years. Because of the prior strike prior, that is doubled for a total of 50 years to life. You know, Mike wasn't the one that needed to go. He wasn't hustling, he wasn't doing dirt and whatever it may be, but I think that's what, in a sense, like his death brought about a tighter family. It brought a lot of people together, even more so. These kids all kind of have a reason, like, they all remember Mike and they, they all looked up to him because they were behind, the generation behind Mike. It gives them a reason to go skate too because, you know, Mike was into it. I'm backing them Hammer City dudes because they're like yeah. really doing it, you know what I mean? Like on the grimy, like underground to like, they got real love for skateboarding, you know what I mean? And like, that's inspirational to me because you know, like I dedicated my whole life to skateboarding pretty much. What's Hammer City? Hammer City is a is a family. Hammer City is HCSG is a Hammer City skate gang. Hammer City is love, really. Not actually a gang. What it means in the dictionary, you know? More than five people. It's just a bunch of friends just coming together and making their own skate company. Hammer City is just a black mic representative. Skating has to be involved in your day in the daily basis. We want everybody to stay positive about skating. And we're showing that if you have an opportunity, take it. Why not? 
You know, Mike had his opportunities, he took them. We basically want as much people as we can get. Little kids, older kids, you know what I'm saying? We trying to, we trying to build an empire here. So when, when we do get too old to skate, you know what I'm saying? We'll have people carrying on. African Americans in Long Beach wasn't big on skating. You know what I mean? They weren't big on it. But to see Terry and Mike being as good as they were and to come out of Long Beach, that's big, man. So a lot of kids started kind of picking up on what they're doing and was like, wow. Somebody show me It's a few things my papa never told me Maybe cause the stone's still rolling No moss yet It's a few things my mama never told me to mold me But her soul is so golden the way she flaws it And I ain't mad at they secrets though It's a hard sell to tell a young child about the deepest slope But I done seen through they weakness so I understand a little bit on how defeats can slow You so far down that your meekness grow And every day it get colder when the breeze is blow Grandmama sat me down, said you need to know Boy, you a little light in this world let your heat just glow, have patience, some things take time It ain't no limit to the goals that you can hold in your mind Let the soul in you climb, till you reach the gates of heaven Like your chariot is carrying children who gone blind And you gon' get them they sight back, when all they see is night black Believe in everything that you do, and just like that Things will happen for you, keep shining them rays It's bright enough to spread grace over a million graves Of a million slaves to bring honor to the elders Who held us away from danger when the danger would have killed us They never failed us, let their souls have peace And follow in their footsteps you got brothers to keep in this good life. It's so much I can show you Without rolling through Beverly Hills Without money calls, clothes, or even ecstasy deals I don't need weed to ease me when I'm stressing for real I just close my eyes and try to think how heaven feels Just to feel good again Even though I know when I open them It's back to the hood again with kids hold home with them Just to feel protected cause the videos are showing them How to shoot fools and take their dough from them That's why I try to give my soul to them The lyrics I spit, they reject it cause they stress it for material Getting so sick and tired of fighting over serious Where you at? Is it popping? Did your water break? Contraptions? I'm gonna be coming in a second. Bye. Hey, hey, what are your last thoughts before you become a father? <laughs> the skater died. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Watch out, your stomach is tight enough. No, it's not. You didn't tell me. Any last thoughts before becoming a father? Huh? Well, it changed the way I am now, and it changed the way I skate. Like, because I got to adjust my time, you feel me? I be able to get up and walk around with her, you know? As far as like skating every day, being outside, you know what I'm saying, all day, every day, seeing everybody, like just being on every block, chilling and smoking, drinking all in like the whole day, it ain't none of that, you feel me? Do none of that no more. Choking on your spit, huh? I know what big kids do. Sit back. How's your two months been, huh? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Back in the day before I had a kid, it was daytime, nighttime. Whenever I felt like drinking, I was gonna drink, you feel me? But yeah, it's changed, it's changed me a lot. I think everybody should have kids. Daredevil's My daredevil. Sent Sunday, August 24th at 11.55 a.m. The other detailed message is from Juice. My nigga Queese got shot. Well, I don't know what time it was last night or today. But yeah, yeah, St. Mary Hospital. 
He shot, walked up to me, and then he kept. And then he walks off. I could have killed you, nigga. Okay, that was real. Let me think about something else. <laughs> I'm still like waiting for you to be like, ah, just kidding. I seen it in his eyes. He was gonna kill me. So I just closed my eyes and was like, this is it. This is where it ends for me. But. No. Miraculously, yeah. the gun jammed, so that was grace. That was all grace. Somebody, I mean, yeah, I mean that I was spiritual, like angels had to be there. Just, Is he about to show a juice up? Pretty soon. About to be up there, nigga. About to be up there. You hear that? He's gonna be up there. Let's see. Let's get it. I wouldn't want to catch it like that. Let's go, right here. Let's go. Right here. Let's go. So what do you think for him? What's it gonna take to keep keep him out of trouble, keep him focused? Stay on that skateboard. That's what he needs to do. That's what's gonna keep him out of trouble, keep him focused if he stay on that board. What, what grade you in now? 10th. 10th grade? So what you plan to do with, with life and everything? Right now and after school. Uh, right now and after school, what you, right what now, you plan on doing? I'm trying to make it into my skating business right now. Pretty much about to get a job in a couple of months. You get a job? <laughs> yes. Wait, where are you gonna get a job at? I might get a job at Ralph's, man. They, get, they hire you when you're 16. What you gonna do at Ralph's? I don't know, money. Whatever they need me to. I heard they pay good, man. My, my homie is there. Everyone has responsibility. Jobs, jobs isn't an issue right now. Things are tough. Things are hard. And the Lord knows where we're headed at this point, and what we need, just through the fighting, what we've been fighting for. You know, we've been fighting for Black Mike. We've been fighting for our skate park to get better. We've been fighting for our kids to get off the streets. We've been fighting for things that people don't appreciate or don't believe in, but we've been fighting and we still fighting to this day. And I know it never get worse. It only gets better. You know, that's my motto. You know, I feel like can't nothing break our spirits at this moment. The joy inside is fortified, the more we strive for the truth, for void lies within our short lives. Appreciate every breath, you heard it before, but take heed when death is literally knocking at your door. The way I live life is J. Christ or bust, and when it's me and him together, no one's nice as us. But my man from round the way ain't liking life so much, cause every few months, a loved one bites the dust. But I can see pregnant women giving birth to this, a classic being performed when the coat is split. A big smile on your face when you purchase this, and if it rocks one soul, then it was worth the stick When life hits hard, this is the song to put on Giving you hope, like when the villains smack the grid on And the unsung hero finally gets his props In a war zone, where everybody lick off sides Wondering when these names gon' retire the mic As far as rap goes, it's only natural that they lack flow No backbone, then they chop your soul in a capsule The greatest to ever do it isn't dead, Jack This is a local cat, most step told you that Hip-hop is not broadcast